All right, P, so we got to talk about it. I feel his knee hit mine. And then immediately I just felt my leg just go back. So automatically I dropped the ball. Fuck that. Drop this shit. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Podcast P, your favorite new hoop show, presented to you by Wave Sports and Entertainment. I got my guys here, Mr. Church League MVP legend, <laughs> Dallas Rutherford. Reverend Dallas Rutherford. And Mr. <laughs> Steal Your 2K player, yeah. mm. Jackie That's Long. Me. And I will steal your player too, P. I will. I'm you will. Day, I'm going to do this. I'm a, you will. I'm That's, a, I'm it ain't going to be no league. It, it don't even matter. It don't. It's, it's going to be a big time setup, and I'm just being real. That's all I, I got to say. You know <laughs> okay. what I'm saying? All right, guys. This is a weekly show dropping every Monday for the rest of the NBA season. We'll usually record these three to four days from release. So make sure you go subscribe on YouTube and turn those post notifications on and follow us across all our social media channels at Podcast P Show. All right, Jackie, what do we have coming up on episode four? First, we're going to reveal the unwritten rules in the basketball. The MVP award, how can it be improved? The best in-game dunkers today that's playing right now. And I know y'all want to be no, Yo, is he okay? Yes, my boy is okay. We're going to talk about that leg, and we're talking about that first, P, on Podcast P. <laughs> okay. Bam. <laughs> okay. Jesus. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bam. Bam. I mean, come on, Dallas. I've been watching, so I got to know if you've been watching. You've been watching March Madness. I have. Come on. I've been making a lot of money on prize picks. Wow, because I'm telling you this, I've been doing the same thing. I hope y'all use the promo code Podcast P. But before we get too far into it, let the people know what Prize Picks is, Dallas. So Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app. You pick two to six players, then pick if they will score more or less than their Prize Pick projection. You aren't competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. How many entries did you put in? I placed two entries, a March Madness NCAA entry and an NBA entry. Entry. So these only who projections? Oh no, Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch and you can win up to 25 times your money per entry. Come on, so y'all already know on top of all that, all first time users that deposit and use promo code podcast P will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. That means if you deposit $100, mm. Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize picks will give you $50. Cha ching! All right, P, so we got to talk about it. Got a little knee injury here against the Oklahoma City Thunder. And at the moment of this recording, we know it was a sprain. And so you're going to be reevaluated in two to three weeks. But let's kind of start off with just the play. Walk us through what happened. Uh, did you kind of see him coming? Just in your opinion, what was going on during that play? I mean, initially, I got the rebound, right? And I see him like swipe to try to get the ball, but like he's is out of his rebounding area. I got the ball, right? So I come down and like I just I feel his knee hit mine. And then immediately I just felt my leg just go back. So automatically I drop the ball. Fuck that. Drop this shit. <laughs> dirty and then player. I, I, uh, <laughs> dirty player. Now you my boy, I'm just mad. I That's wouldn't. I'm just being. Yeah, and I hear man. you on that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say like he. He. I like how he competes. Mm -hmm. Lou Dort competes hard. It was just. It, it. It was honestly just a wild play from from his side. Like, but you had the ball. I had the head. ball. He finished like like through me. Basically, like it would have been contact regardless. You know what I mean? It wasn't a way he was going to avoid me. He tried to go rebound and just flew towards me. And the way he hit me, like my knee didn't have a chance to absorb my fall. So my leg kind of just got stuck. And so when he hit me, my leg went backwards. It's the only way my leg could have went was backwards. And immediately I just, dropped, like I said, dropped the ball. I just fell to the ground. How was that? And it was like that pain where like, you know, like the pain where you just like, you just close your eyes. Like, damn, like. Something happened. When is it going to, like, when is it going to stop? You know what I mean? Mm. So I was just like, damn, when is it, like, when is the pain going to stop? So it was like throbbing. It was hurting. The only thing going through my mind is like, 
Like, I hope I didn't tear no major shit. Like, oh. I hope I hope I didn't blow. Because you hear stories, right, of dudes blowing their knees out. It happens in every sport, every contact sport, like runners and shit. Outside of contact sports, you hear about them blowing their knees out. And you think about, like, damn. Like, you don't want to know what that feels like. But if it happens, what does that feel like? Right. And that's what was going through my head. Like, damn, is this it? Like, is this what it feels like when you when – you, tear your ACL when you tear your MCL like is this the injury I right here I tore my ACL you did meniscus. it before yes yes so you know what that you yes. know what that pain feels like yes okay. and it was, it was all bad for me so I felt you that day I don't like talking about injuries yeah. or even watching injuries yeah. like when people say watch them and replay them I hate that shit right because it makes me it, it makes me think of my knee it was crazy when cause they I couldn't walk right I tried to put pressure on it I tried to walk it off the court and then they had to carry me but then when I got back into the locker room, like I felt the pain go down. So I was like, oh, maybe it ain't that bad. It's you know tricky. what I mean? So I like tried to take a couple steps into the training room. I get into the training room and then they're like evaluating me. They're doing, you know, stress test stuff. See, you know, try to see the level of it. I see mom and that pops was there horrible. too. Yeah. I see you know, you know mom, she, she's <laughs> she was a worry. probably freaking out. She was, she, I seen her when it happened. She was just chill. Yeah. Like she was just chill for a minute. Like, I know my son is in good hands. She yeah. probably I prayed about 20 times before I got for into sure. the locker room. Because <laughs> when, when you got up, I'm like, he good. He good. But then when I seen the other two, then you was walking on the one. I yeah. said, ah, shit. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't know what happened. Cause, and I was one of them dudes. I know everybody was probably blowing you up. I didn't even want to hit you or talk to you because I'm like, I see him when I come to work. But right. it's like, wait, I, I know <laughs> he in the NBA. He got good treatment. Yeah. They're yeah. going to take care of that knee. They're going to definitely take You know, take I ain't going to be knee. worried about, are you okay? He know he okay. Yeah. Shit. I was leaving, uh, I, by the way, Podcast D is now 2-1 and one in the church league. Okay. <laughs> I lost. I played horrible. I couldn't make a layup. It was just, it was, I was frustrated. Did, it, y'all had the championship. No, 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 no. It wasn't a championship. Okay. Playoffs start next week, though. Oh, so I'll okay. keep you guys tuned. I'm going to try to get some game film so you guys kind of, you know, yeah, maybe yeah. critique some of my play a little bit. But I checked my phone at the end of the game and I saw the alert like uh, 360 in game dunk. I'm like, ooh, I was all hyped. And then I got home and my boy called me. He's like, bro, did you see it? And I was like, yeah. I saw like all excited. Yeah. Like, bro, it was. And he's like, nah, bro, like, yeah. go look. And I went on Twitter. I'm like, oh, yeah, oh. yeah. But with that bad. play, yeah. with that play peak, was there anything that, you could have done to kind of avoid that? Or is that just one of those fluke plays? Um, like, is there anything that you could have done? Looking back at it, obviously hindsight's a little different, but if you could go back in that play again, do you think you could have avoided it at all? Uh, sh- yeah. If whoever shot the ball made it, and Lou Dort <laughs> doesn't go for the rebound. <laughs> Injuries shot avoided. It. That's a real I don't even. I, <laughs> I don't even know who shot it. Like I don't even know who shot. I just I was under the basket. Like yeah, it was one of those rebounds. Like yeah, uncontested. <laughs> Nobody's around me. He was getting hot. Yeah, man. like okay, oh. got it. And then all of a sudden, he just comes out of nowhere. I don't think what he did was malicious. Like he wasn't trying to hurt me. He just plays hard. He can get wild at times, but he he's a hard worker. He plays hard. Trying to get extra possessions. I don't I don't knock him. You know for competing. It was just a freak accident. Part so of the game. Did Lou Dort or any other uh, OKC player reach out to you? I talked to, you know, I played there. So I still, all the trainers, the training staff, the GM, um, all of them reached out to me. You know, hope you're okay, well wishes, speedy recovery, you know, all the good stuff. I saw a couple of them as I was leaving the arena. Uh, <laughs> you know, they was giving me support. Well, you tweeted to everybody, you know, appreciate all. So. Mm-hmm. Did any of your Clipper fans? Clippers, or? man, it was, I wasn't, like, when it happened, it was just so many people that hit me up, and it was kind of like going back down that path of when I broke my leg, and it's cool to get, you know, that all that love and support, but it could be overwhelming, and my phone was just going crazy, people hit me up. Was the most surprising person that reached out to you that you was like, what? I mean, my phone still got un- so you hella got unread. How many unread messages do you have right now on your phone? I probably got, like, 40... 50 uh, unreads. I was, I was thinking more, but no. And you looking at some of the names. <laughs> I went through a lot. Okay. <laughs> That's, That's like crazy. 40, 50. Yeah. But I mean, it was it was dope, you know, to get the support from the guys around the league. My teammates showing love. You know, they always, you know, People texting was, me that night. They was hitting me and this dude up. Yeah. 
all up on the podcast. Come people. on, we co-workers. No. Like, literally, they was... We family. Some dude was like, let us know what's going on with right. like, right. you. Like, we don't got to tell you because I don't know. People hit me up like, I know the diagnosis right away. Right. Like, yeah, that's So what happened? It's like, y'all don't watch... I'll tell y'all in the morning. going to MRI yeah. in the morning. I'll tell y'all in the morning. I don't know what happened. tell y'all hospital, but... It's sore. To MRI. It's best I got for you right now. But, that, how, but how, that, that's, that's dope, man, to get that much love. And like just off of an injury, off you know an what injury, I'm saying? Right. Like that's how much people concern about. You. That's right. that's dope. That's how I, if I play sports, that will make me come back no matter what, just because I owe y'all now. Yeah, <laughs> Jackie, how many people texted you when you had your ACL tear? Did you have any love, support? Did anybody reach Who out? Who hit you up? <laughs> that Who phone you was up? quiet. <laughs> First of all. <laughs> My homeboys that was there and all the people that was other entertainers checked in on me. Okay. okay. You know what I'm saying? They definitely checked in, mm -hmm. but I didn't get no checks like every day. And, and tw tweeting and Instagram wasn't even out when that happened. Damn. So imagine, <laughs> it wasn't that, none of that was even around. I think it was my space at the time. So I didn't get none of that love like Pete getting, but I appreciate the love I got. Yeah. No. All I can. I, I can't get wear, it. I can't wait to hear about one of your injuries. I didn't know that you I tore it. Wait. I probably would have been a little softer when you came and played in, in the, the church, church league. If I would have known sense, that, like this dude's going through an he injury, he probably can't right do some of the stuff he think he can do right now. And I got now, sciatic right, right now. Yeah. And you got that sciatic nerve. The sponsor with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Pete, you were touching on it a little bit. You've obviously been through an injury that most guys don't really recover from. You've been able to excel, kind of change your game a little bit. Uh, you're obviously a skilled player, so I think the athleticism, you don't need to be dunking on people like you were younger. You can still play, get to your spots, and be effective. But going through that injury in the past, I know they're two different injuries. This mm -hmm. one's not near as... Um, bad as the last one, but how does the experience of going through that, going through the rehab process, this is going to be a lot quicker, Lord willing, but talk a little bit about how going through that, that experience is going to help you with this one. Well, going through like a major injury, bro, like it, it helped me prepare for like every injury and every rehab, every surgery that I had past that point. Because like up until me breaking my leg, I've, I've never hurt more than an ankle sprain like right. I've never injured myself more than you know a jammed finger like and so when that happened it was it was like like all right how do I deal with this right so I got over that hurdle now like I know what to expect like all right treat this rehab as like as it's a practice like go as hard as I can make sure I'm eating the right stuff the hardest thing about the rehab process is like getting complacent and like thinking like, oh, I'm not playing so I can eat what I want. Mm. I don't got to, you know, work out because I'm not playing like, yeah, I can drink. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can drink. <laughs> I can drink what I want. Like, and so going through previous injuries, I, I know that like this is the point where I got to like go even like I got to be even tighter with my diet. I got to be even tighter with what I put in my body. Wow. And then I just, you know, I got to attack rehab like like I said, like it's practice. You know what I mean? One of the quotes that always stood out to me and Kobe, uh, when I broke my leg, was a mentor through that process was like, you know, attack rehab like you're practicing, like you're working out. Like that's how you have to attack rehab. And so like that's just how I look at it. Every time I'm hurt, all right, boom. What I got to do, let's go do it. I'm going to go my hardest I can and get myself the best chance. That's what's up. Motivation out there, kids. Just know. <laughs> To do rehab, do rehab like practice. <laughs> Shit. You know what I mean? For real. Go hard. You gotta go hard. That's how you overcome an injury. So it's uh, obviously we're gearing up for playoffs and the injury didn't come at the greatest time, mm -hmm. but there's still ways that you can affect the team. Uh, you can still be a leader, cheer them on, maybe coach them up a little bit. But how do you kind of change your leadership style when you're on that sideline trying to get your guys going to make this playoff run here? I just got to be like engaged as much as possible because I don't know what my timetable is. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a, like I said, do whatever I can do to sh shorten, you know, the process of when I can return. But I don't know when that date is. Right. And the last thing I can do is not be involved with what's going on. Cause who knows, like, you know what I mean? Who knows how long injuries take? So I'm, I'm, I'm every time I'm injured, I'm engaged at practices. I'm engaged at shoot arounds. I'm engaged when we watch film, when I'm at games, like, yo, this is what I see. Like, this is how they're guarding you. Um, like you can get easy looks and opportunities on this, whether it's, you know, conversation with zoo, like, yo, zoo, he's not a shot blocker. You can go at him. Like I'm gonna be involved. Like, and so 
that has always kept me in the game. Like, because it's easy. You're just sitting on a bench and it's <laughs> looking around like oh, throwing t-shirts. Throwing t- <laughs> <laughs> That's over with. I'll tell you that right now. Throw it. Yeah, I, I can't. Not, not for a good little while. Um, and it, it's easy to like fall out of engagement of a game. So, you know, that's little tricks that, you know, just as a leader of keeping guys engaged and, and, and for myself staying engaged in the game. Do you watch the game? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll play. Did you watch the game yesterday? Yeah, I watched the game last night. I watched the game. I was locked in, and I was, you know, I'm watching what we're running. Like, oh, okay, this is right. Chin, or this is V Shake, or this. Like, I'm going through the plays. Like, and then I'm watching. Like, oh, okay, this is this is what's open. And uh, damn, they guarded it well. This possession, or even what they're what they're running. We we who, played them. Who did you like yesterday? That was <laughs> why I killed. He did. <sighs> Automatic, Kid, 13 like for 15, crazy. just efficient. Bones played well, gave a good boost. I mean, it's, it's you know, that's what we're going to rely on, man. Next man up. Guys got to elevate and step up. Bones did that last night. Had a heck of a game. T-Man was great. Russ was great. I mean, guys coming together. Nico hit big threes down the stretch. That's guys coming time. together. That's what you want to see. Before the injury, P, you put out the two-hand 360 in the half court. Tell us a little bit about that. t Lou drew up. P going to be in this corner. Mace, you going to bring it to him. P back cut. I'm like, all right, bet. That's my jump side. I'm good. <laughs> so I'm going through like, as he's drawing it up, I'm going through like, no no lie, I'm going through all the scenarios. If somebody's there, somebody's not there, like if it's clear lane, if he's close to me, like I'm, because I'm not thinking of a basic dunk at all. <laughs> I, I In my head, like I'm going to do something crazy right here. I just was feeling good. So sure enough, he drew it up. And Lou Dort, he's aggressive defensive player. So he's like, he's biting on everything. He's fighting over screens. So it was a perfect like draw up in that scenario. So I, I started inching him up slowly, get him to bite. And then I hit him with a quick one, huh, shimmy. Get him <laughs> off me, right? And I forget, some somebody was low, but he like just just blazed through real quick. So I'm like, perfect. So I, I bro, I don't, I didn't even have it in my mind that I was going to necessarily 360 but it, I was just going to do something crazy. And I I just think the momentum just carried my body through it, and I just started spinning. And I was like, all right, well, sh- I hope I hope the rim is right here. That young, that young P came young out. Young P here. just came out. Come on, and, and young just, P. Ah. Come on, young P. In the game before that, but didn't you have a, a Off the a backboard. Dunk? You had another No, the same, the same game. The same game? You same had the, game. That First was quarter. the same game. You had a poster dunk. First quarter. Wow. No, Okay. So you're more comfortable doing a 360 because I always, even on a little rim, it was hard for me. Like, you know how sometimes like people, they, they're they better spinning this way with mm-hmm. the 360. It was almost like an open 360 mm-hmm. you're going with the clock. So do you, I'm trying to think like in the dunk well, the contest, way, I think you went that way too. Yeah. The way, so the way I jump, they say it's like a reverse, like you reverse spin because most people go. Right, they go this way. The other way, <laughs> yeah. And I, I always got it from Vince Carter. Watching Vince do that 360 oh, windmill. Beautiful. That was like one of the first trick dunks I was able to do just because I can I can spin that way. I can't spin the other way. <laughs> yeah. So You're when goofy. he did, yeah. I got to see you try it the other way. It's probably like uh, YT, it, right-handed like, layup. It'd be like just... YT, yeah. I have no bounce, like uncoordinated when it comes to spinning nasty. that way. It looks nasty. <laughs> It'll just be like a little like I don't think I can remember in you there. doing a 360 in traffic like that ever. I I've think never that's the first that. time you've ever done that. I've dunk. never done that. I don't know what got into me. I actually had a crazy pool workout that day before. Mm. Backstory to a little, okay, little crazy here we pool go. workout. Get in that pool. I was like, literally, like no heater on in the pool. It's you know, it's like damn near raining still in in Cali. Uh, Daniela's out there in his like big ass like wool coat <laughs> watching me. You had the speedo. I didn't have no speed. I had some tights though. Okay, okay. I had some enough. tights. Okay. On, just some gotta... tights. And I'm like jumping, running in the pool, like dunking under the water. Like I'm, I'm just in some crazy. Wait, were you like, by recovery. yourself, like just doing your own workout, yeah. or did you have someone there, like actually putting you? through No, it was just me. Got it. it was just me. I was just trying to do because we had the day off, so I was just trying to do some recovery to get ready for the game. So I'm like, all right, day off. Like I know pool usually pool is good for recovery. My pool was cold, so it was kind of like you know, um, contrast and going from the pool. And then I had my sauna. So I went to the sauna right after. But I went through a whole workout. It was freezing cold. Mm. But, I, you know, after a while, you start jumping and, you know, moving in the pool. Pool starts to get, like, bath water. So, yeah, I, I got it in. And it showed. 
Yeah, it was a, it was a. I went, I went crazy. Yeah, yeah no, it was <laughs> I went too crazy. I was like, oh. So Pete, earlier you had a poster dunk. So what's better as a dunker, get, uh, catching a body or getting flashy? They they both had a moments. Like they both have had a moments because the 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 poster, it's like a momentum driver, crowd going crazy, bench going crazy, and it's just like it zaps a team. Like especially you dunk on a big man, it's like yeah, that was our center. Like <laughs> I, I ain't jumping with him. You jumping with him? I ain't jumping with him. He jumped. He dunked on our he center. On towns or you blocked towns before? Huh? Which one was? It? I blocked him. Blocked him. Block town. Big man. Had this but if you, if you, yeah, down. yeah. So if you dunk on a center, <laughs> that that's 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 no better feeling than if you can catch a center, like, because they gonna block everything, they gonna jump for everything, they going they going to get it. So if you when you dunk on a center, that's like, that's that's the prime, the peak of like dunks in a game. How many poster shots you got? I got a couple. I got quite a few. What's your favorite one? Probably the the fame, the most famous one, the Which Birdman. I want to know so we can put his picture on the screen. The Birdman, the Birdman. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Birdman, I had to do it. Yeah, so the Birdman. The Birdman. That was probably the my best in game poster in my career. Do you have that poster? Oh, absolutely. I got it painted in my crib. Ooh, Birdman. Shout be out, shout out, shout out, my guy Art Mob. <laughs> shout out, Art Mob. He did a, a crazy painting for me, um, and I got that moment painted and put up in my crib. Iconic play, like that's. Where, where, where is that at? Is it in the game room? Yeah, in, in downstairs. I don't know why. I'm not so we. I just, I just, they just, to, they just, just finished it. it. I just put them up. Yeah, Sweet. so they're new. So we're gonna see it at the new. You gonna see it? You gonna see that new taping. podcast? P. You gonna mm. see the new podcast? P. Okay. Well, speaking of dunks, I'm just saying. When was the first time you ever dunked? First time I dunked crazy. It was my literally the the last game of my freshman year in high school. What? Literally the last game. Wait, yeah, yeah. Been trying the whole school year. How old was you? Fourteen. How tall? I was probably like six two, six three. In your last game, you dunked. Last game, last game of the season in Little Rock. I never forget. Got a breakaway. Went up. Ugh. And it felt easy too. Like it was. I was surprised. <laughs> like damn, why I could I could have been doing this? Like did y'all win the game? We won the game. We won the game. <laughs> won the we game. won the game. Was this JV or varsity? Were you playing varsity when you were freshman? Uh, this was a uh, freshman. But like when you were a freshman, were you playing varsity? Or were you playing JV? No, nah, I was on both. But I played mostly on the freshman team. Get that confidence up. Get that confidence you know I mean? up. But my team, like my school, was new. So my freshman year, we didn't even have varsity yet. We just had freshmen and JV. How long did y'all talk about that dunk? <laughs> oh, it was like I, I it built go? off that. Like, did I'm, you get, did, was you the man around the school? For I was a the little man. Bit? I was I was like, oh yeah, P P dunking now. Off a dunk. Did anybody was your mom and them there? They got it recorded. Yeah, got yeah, that? yeah. It's, Can we it's, get that footage? It, Can we get that picture? It's gonna be it's gonna be hard to find it, but we got it. Okay, we got it. I'm just making sure. You know, moms had the like little V8, the little mini VH tech, uh, VHS tapes. <laughs> I didn't know how to work it. Didn't even. You need like the you you had to put the tape in the tape to get in the VCR. Like they don't even make VCRs no more, so I don't even know how we gonna watch it. So you definitely don't got no footage. Just so I, got got footage. Got I got the footage. I got the footage. You have no footage. <laughs> it's, it's a wrap. We it, can't it, put it on the TV. We gonna have to watch it like. Yo, come over here, Jackie. Come like, we got to get hey, together and watch I'll be it. there. I'll be there. P, I, so. I got, some, I, got some, I got some highlights, though. So, P, who your favorite in-game dunkers today, though? Today? Like, who, who out there doing windmills and 360s and all that, like, that you Ja, love? you got to put Ja. Crazy, bro. Ja might be probably Crazy. the best in-game dunker today. He's just because how me, small man. he is. Oh, it's scary. And he light. He bodying. He 360 and on, on fast breaks. Wearing a mask now and just, just flying. He's going crazy. Air. Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, crazy in-game dunker. Yeah, yeah Donovan just Mitchell. Got one. He just got a body in, in uh, Brooklyn, yeah, right? He just got one. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, yeah, he was like laughing in there. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's scary. You got a guy going Who fast else? downhill at you. Jumping. I ain't jumping at Who all. Who else we got? I'm going to go Zach Levine. Oh, nasty. 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 Disrespectful. Like Giannis. Like Giannis is. Yeah, he, he's just so you powerful. Can't, like, it's like, dude, relax. It's crazy some of the finishes he does, See, though. Giannis like, so tall. His don't look I'll like I'll watch a, a game and be like, no no way he's dunking at. <laughs> he, he, he's so tall. <laughs> he don't look like it. a dunk. <laughs> it, it don't even look <laughs> right. Like it, it just stand up and like. Like, damn, am I playing on the same size court? Like, I'm trying to think who else is a beast. In-game dunkers? Yeah. Who on your team? Kawhi just got one. Kawhi. Kawhi's a sleeper. Mm-hmm. Like, he's a sleeper. You think so? Yeah. Real good sleeper? 
Because I, 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 I ain't never seen him really do too many dunks. Not even my it, he'll, he surprised you because <laughs> his hand, bro, his hands is I'm so He's big. a real good sleeper. Yeah. I know y'all laughing at that. But I'm like, I'm saying he's a good sleeper because it's like, I, I've never seen. Yeah. I see him, him get, very fundamental. I think he's he a gets, good sleeper, though. If we he, were going to be sleeping, I bet he sleeps pretty well. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, gets he gets great sleep. Rest. He gets great sleep. <laughs> but in terms of his dunking, like, because his hands are so big. And so you like you're not gonna block his whoa, shot. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> yeah, he's trying to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're reaching. I had to get uh, him yeah, back. Hey, that, I, that whoa, was, you're reaching. I had to get him back. Like, there was a on. picture on Twitter, and it's you guys at half court, and you're going like this, and yeah. man, it looks like you're a baby. Yeah, like it, 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 it looks like it's it's incredible. Yeah, like so that guy can just grip the ball. Bro, I, just, like psh- now, I just. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. You can't do that. Have you, What's did you, up, bro? Did you see the picture? Yeah, I saw it, bro. Nah, I, he's going like this, and you're doing the awkward like. He, uh, he can't even like he he don't his hands is so like he don't even shake my hand like he'd be like this like like you you're me and I'm him like you give me a head shake he'll just be like <laughs> <laughs> like I think he knows his yeah, hands are like, so big he's, that he's like, probably I'm like not uncomfortable. Even, with yeah, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just two finger him. Why slap? Chris Rock. Oh my God! <laughs> he should go to Power Slap. Kawhi should go to do. Yeah, be knocked oh. out on stage. <laughs> Power Slap is crazy, bro. I've been watching a little bit more, and it's getting more entertaining oh, as I win. watch it. Somebody gonna die doing that, man. Nah, they'll that be okay. Sport. Somebody, we should do it. Man. Like imagine, yeah, imagine, yeah, like imagine you signing up. Sight. I mean, your ear. ear no, nah, just ear, imagine, ear, imagine you signing up for the tournament, right? And they're like, "Yo, you got to face this guy named Claw." <laughs> <laughs> you like what? Claw. How Claw. many wins he got? How <laughs> many hands he got? How many wins he got? With his hand size. How many straight knockouts? You got <laughs> nah, I'm cool. Right. <laughs> Get hit you by You got the claw fingers. in the first round. That's crazy. Claws. Hell yeah. no. Pete, do you know who my first in-game dunk, and there was like no one there, and it's like it's one of my biggest like I was never able to get a dunk in a game, but the one game I got a dunk in was a summer league, and mm. like no one was there. But oh. Drew is the only person, like my only friend, to witness it. To witness it, because he threw me the ball, and I, 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 I could dunk. But in game, it was always like, all right, I'm gonna get pulled if I miss it. Yeah. But I did a two hand dunk. But Drew is the only person to witness it. Like no one was there, so I was yeah. like, yo, was yeah. I came back home. Like I went to my dad, I said, bro, I dunked in the game. <laughs> He's like, what wait, this? what? And, it, and crazy enough, like once you get that first dunk, it it just clicks. Like, I was trying so hard after that. I was, I was, and you you were struggling. I didn't do it. It just uh, my, I, for I, me, I, it just clicked. Like damn, I, I know how to dunk now. I so ain't like, never dunk. <laughs> so you don't know what that feel like. I never have, never will. <laughs> Fair enough. Cool. So after the dunk, Kawhi kind of gave like a little stank face, like, ooh, that was nice. Like, did did anybody say anything to you in the huddle? Like, hey, bro, hey yo, the, hey, hey. <laughs> the whole, bro, the whole bench was going crazy. And it was like, after I did the dunk, it was like the crowd went crazy. But then it was like, it was like a, a, a reaction after it happened too. Like, I don't know if they put it up on the Jumbotron. But it was like another reaction as the game was going on, like, and it just—I think it was just people like, "Damn, what did, what the f- did he just do that?" Like, <laughs> no, it after being too. stunned, they were like, yeah. "Damn, he just did that." Lou didn't see the last one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> when you, you went to the bench, did he? But say yeah, something? bro, the the whole like the whole bench, everybody was like, "Bro, that was fire!" Like, how, do, bro, how do you jump that way? Like, it was. <laughs> They was freaking out like the way I jumped spinning that way. Like, hey, I couldn't even jump that way. I look silly doing that. <laughs> and I be Bro, what, what's gotten into you? I ain't seen you dunk since like the the uh, the injury. Like yeah. how you used to dunk, like you used to dunk crazier than what you dunk now. Right. So to see you still dunking after the injury is like amazing. I'll be like, oh, that motherfucker still got it, boy. Yeah, I, I still got it. I still got it. And I told y'all, like I told y'all I was getting healthy. Yeah, no. I was, I mean, I was getting healthy. You were just talking about how your body was feeling good right. and- I like seeing you dunk. <sighs> I, do. I don't want to get emotional. I like seeing on the you dunk because it let them know that you still out there and got them legs, boy. You still. Well, I'm trying to. It's just for my 2K rating. I'm trying to get yeah, a little yeah. more added to my dunk package. Yeah, we're a little low ratings right uh, now. It might have it dropped low down. Rate. You might have that red sign underneath you right now. He's not on the uh, game right now. He's not on the game right now. I'm not even on the game right now. Picking right now. You know they updated. You out. They out. I'm he out. out. I'm yeah. out. He out. He out. Yeah. Got it. Understood. <laughs> Just letting you know. Understood. So another surprising fact about you and Kawhi is that Lil Wayne is both your favorite rappers. And DJ Envy just came out and said that 50 Cent, who's Jackie's boy, said that 50 Cent would beat Lil Wayne in a versus battle. How do you feel about that? 
hell no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. Bro, Lil Wayne. <laughs> Lil Wayne, bro, this <laughs> discography is off the chart. Like, I don't think there's anybody that can compete with his albums, his mixed mixtapes. Like, do, are we, are we talk no, about, I mean, I, you're I, talking I, about Lil Wayne, bro. Yeah. And it, 50 Cent was one of my favorite rappers. Don't get me wrong. Like, he's still one of my favorite, like, OG rappers, that, like, since high school. But ain't nobody, bro, ain't nobody <laughs> touching Lil Wayne's categories. Lil Wayne got us through our, our AAU circuit. Oh, my goodness. Like, Lil bro, Wayne I was, used to be feeling Oh, my good. God. I was like, who, what is this? <laughs> and, and it was like a one-up. If somebody has something that you ain't heard of, like, yo, bro, what? Yeah, like, where'd you heard get that? Yeah, where'd <laughs> like, you get bro, this? Like, like, let me burn flowers, that CD. <laughs> right. Let me get that. So, Pete, did you see our WSE colleagues, Jason and Travis Kelsey, announce their New Heights podcast live show? I did. Well, dude, their tickets actually sold out in the first day. Wow. New Heights fans better use SeatGeek if they want to go. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There's more than 70,000 events every day on SeatGeek, from sports to concerts and more. But wait a minute, what makes SeatGeek better than others? They put all the tickets across the web in one place, so you know you're getting the best deal. Then they rate the tickets on a scale from 1 to 10. And finally, every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. That's a good point, P. Let's help the fans out even more and give them our promo code. Use our code PODCASTP for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code PODCASTP. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Staying on the Clippers, Pete. Not too long ago, your boy Westbrook against the Blazers at the end of the game, he had a chance to get a triple-double. Mm-mm-mm. And you was like, you know what? I want my boy Russ to get this triple double. I'm gonna pass him the ball, but he said no. What was that? Another one. No, I what didn't. What was that? Bro, I didn't. I didn't know he was. I well, I mean, I, you gotta you gotta expect he's. Is notching. Westbrook? He surprised you with that? You gotta. I I should have known that he was. You know, if not, if he didn't have a triple double already, that he was close to one. You know what I mean? I I didn't know. I was just looking more so like. Cause you know it's a it's a written rule like all right you don't shoot the ball you're up big you don't shoot the ball at the end so I was looking towards the bench like what do y'all want me to do like y'all want me to shoot this pass like anybody wants to shoot this anybody wants to rock and he I mean he waved it off so I didn't and when it happened I didn't think that he was you know close to a triple double or or he needed points for a triple double oh, so you didn't even know I didn't even know. I was just thinking he was just waving it off like, you know what I mean? You like, got it. <laughs> yeah, let's not be disrespectful. We up, we smacking him like, whatever, let's let's get the game over with. Let's get out of here. He probably ain't got so many triple doubles. He got so many triple doubles. He's like, he just like, I got that I record. That. That's, I, I, that's, yeah, nothing that's nothing to me. That's nothing to me. Yeah, that's nothing but, to me. But, but keep it real with us, though, P. If you was in that situation, <laughs> <laughs> you taking this shot up. You taking uh, that up. Uh, 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 how much time how much time was left? It was like it was like 30 40 seconds. But were you going to get a shot clock so you would have gotten a I shot got the clock? turnover. I got the the shot clock. Mm. I got the shot clock. So I I could have just got a field goal attempt up. You know who was sneaky and did that not too long ago? Greek the freak. Greek the he did. Freak. Greek the freak. <laughs> he did, but they took they took it back. I just, did they really? I just yeah. thought about that. Greek yeah. the freak. Yep. They he gave him the good. rebound initially, but then the league was like, nah, you can't do that. Like, yeah, about- only I feel like only Giannis could get away with that. Get like, away with you know something I mean? like that. Like, it's funny that he did it. It's not it was like so slick with yeah. it. Yeah. It was slick. <laughs> it was slick with it. <laughs> to like even realize, like, oh, okay, I just need one rebound. Let me go down here and just miss it real quick, get it back. Are you keeping track of your stats while you're playing? Like if you're if you're on a hot streak, you're feeling good. And did you ever look up and actually look like you know what I mean? Like, are you looking at that? Yeah and no. Like, I'm not. I don't like. I don't ever play and be like, like looking to see what I'm doing stat wise. The only things that really stand out to me is like turnovers and my efficiency. Like, that's the only stat that I keep in my head. Like, if I if I can keep my efficiency, like shooting the ball well, or if I'm taking care of the ball, like that's the only two things that go through my head when I'm playing. Like, the two stats that I care about. 
So you use the word efficiency. And so now with analytics, you know, everyone's looking at the numbers. And when you first came into the league, it wasn't always like that. You think of Allen Iverson or Kobe, and there'd always be those debates like, oh, he scored 40, but yeah, he shot the ball 40 times. Right. So now this efficiency, kind of talk about how that's kind of changed the game and how analytically players or coaches or even the organizations are kind of judging you on that plus minus. Right, right. It's just a different game. Like back then, AI days, like Kobe early days, it was the guys that got 30 attempts. They got 40 attempts. Like, so they were volume shooters. You know what I mean? So their efficiency, their efficiency is going to fluctuate. You know what I mean? They're going to take tough shots. They're counted on to take majority of the shots. Um, They're like the most gifted guy on the team. And so coming into the league, like, as a rookie, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't getting attempts up anyways. I was getting like maybe six shots, five shots a game. Um, but I, I just always like wanted to work on being efficient. And like now in today's league, everybody's good. Like everybody has a skill set. Like you're, unless you're on a team that's not doing well, then you're going to get a bunch of attempts up. But like majority of the guys are playing with two or three other stars on the team. So you're not going to just be jacking up shots. So it just comes down to like, all right, when I get my looks, I like I, I want to be efficient here. Like I want to make more than I'm missing. That's, you know, end goal. And so, yeah, I look at that. I look at it totally different now, like in, at this stage in my career of just being efficient, taking the right shots, taking good shots and uh, knowing like when to be in attack mode, when I'm hot, keep it going, keep applying pressure. And, uh, you know, just just staying confidence in my shot selection. Right. And then when you talk about kind of your stats and I'm like, do you look up? Don't they in the NBA? I could be way off here, but don't you guys get papers like during the game? You can like literally look at a piece of paper that has your stats from that moment. And they're constantly just passing out your paper. So that's probably how, you know, the guys probably aren't looking up at the scoreboard like we are, but they're looking at that stat sheet just to go. Some like, some some guys do some some guys do I don't I don't look at it at the uh, the printouts because they give it to you like after every timeout they give printouts to the coaches to look at um, some guys look at it I used to but now like I don't again I keep Dang. a tracker in my head like all right turnovers you keep a tracker in your I head. keep a tracker of like turnovers or like uh, not necessarily the shots that I my percentage but like the the shots that I took I'll keep those in my head like damn. I missed this one. I missed that one. Some like turnovers, man. Yeah. So, but it's mo- it's mostly turnovers that I keep a, a tracker on, and like sometimes it just that's interesting. Sometimes it gets the best of me. You know what I mean, like, <laughs> like but then turnovers. sometimes it's like, all right, I can control this. Like I'm I'm playing my game. I'm the, nobody speeding me up. I'm in my zone, and like, all right, I, I'm gonna take care of this ball. So you mentioned it a little bit earlier, and I want to backtrack a little bit, but we were kind of talking about the etiquette of the NBA and some unwritten rules uh, that are kind of there in the league. So, for instance, you know, you're up 50 points or whatever it is, and, you know, we saw Zion Williamson do it the other day uh, when he was healthy against, I forgot who they were playing, the Suns. He went down and just did a nasty windmill. And so talk a little bit about those unwritten rules, whether it's stat hunting, whether it's, you know, not shooting the ball at the end of the quarter so that you're not hurting your your percentage or just, you know, dunking the ball and getting the fans excited at the. Yeah, I think all of them are stupid. You think. OK, so, OK. I think it's stupid that you wouldn't take a shot because you're worried about your percentage. I love those opportunities. Like, give me the ball every time I'll launch that motherfucker from half court. <laughs> One handed, two people, my, like, I give it to me. I love those moments. Because if you make it, like, it's like, oh, oh. <laughs> and it, like, if you miss, so, so the fuck what? You miss. Like, it's just a shot. Right. I hate people that hold on to it. They try to make it look real and, oh, and then right when the buzzer go off, throw it up. Like, I, I hate, I hate when guys, like, do that. Like, take the shot, give it a chance. They didn't like people getting mad for scoring, but, like, at the end before the, the the game's over. They be yeah, I don't get it. They get they mad about it. Like, why? why? I what I don't I don't get it. And nobody really under can explain it and to you. It's just been it's just game. been years of it happening. So, like, they think like, oh, okay, you're not you're like this is what's not to do. Like, you're beating. You're beating at the end of the day, what game. what does that like? You're losing. What is that two points going to do to you? You know what I mean? You lost. You lost. Nothing. If you were so mad about it, you should have scored more. 
<laughs> so it didn't matter if they did that. You know what I mean? Like, what is you mad about? It's stu- it's the dumbest thing. Yeah, in the- people start fighting, and it's like, oh my goodness. It's yeah, like, I, it's. I always said the it. Zion situation, like. The fans came for a show. That's what we're trying to see. Put like, a fucking show on yeah, for him. Zion, he, he dunked the ball. That's what we really want to see. Right. It's like, why y'all right. mad? He did a crazy, that's like, that dunk has like been all, it was oh, all no, over was Sports Center, like oh, ESPN. It was, it was a, a classic like dunk right there. Like he gave us a moment. Like, why are you mad about it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I that that part. I'm glad you talked about that because I, I really always wanted to know about that. Yeah. How people feel because it's like you're getting beat. If I score literally one point, two points, three, what's the difference? Yeah, I, we y'all. No, nah, people get hot, bro. I remember in Indiana, Lance like scored yeah. the last like it was <laughs> Lance, clock going this. down, last couple seconds. Like Lance, I think had a fast break. They thought he was gonna run the ball out, and he goes and lay it up. He's running back half court, right? <laughs> Next thing you know. Uh, I, I want to say Demar. Demar was in his face. Demar like threw somebody threw the ball at him from like he was at half court. They <laughs> threw it from out of bounds at Lance, almost hit Lance. And then Demar gets in his face. PJ Tucker gets in his face, and it's like, bro, for real. Oh, it was a big scuffle over that. It was a big scuffle over it, and I I never understood why guys are are like upset about that. Like it's it's two points. Well, what we you know mad about two he points. He got the ball. We know what he. Yeah, you better uh, next time you have this opportunity. If I'm if I'm be if, I'm, if, I'm, if I got forty eight and that it gonna give me fifty. Oh, I'm. Hey, I bet not see you li- look at Lou and say you, you go do no. Me. I'm getting <laughs> shoot. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get that Lou fifty don't see ball. Shit after time anyway. You said I'm gonna go get my shit. fifty ball. I ain't got a fifty ball yet. I'm gonna go get my fifty ball. Don't even see the best one ever though. I don't know if we can show the clip. But was in a you know it's March Madness right now. I don't think it was in the tournament. It might have been, but it was Monmouth, I believe that's how you say it, college versus Kansas, and another white stallion. His name is George Papas. But it went viral on social media where they were literally down like fifty points to Kansas, I and he that. hit him with the like a hey, good game. Whoop. Yeah, and, and he goes steal it, he goes dunk, dunk it, it. And he's and like, dude, I don't, I don't he care. He like, said something. Uh, like, he was hyped about give, it. He said something I like, I don't guy. give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. I love that guy. I need his autograph. Dallas, I heard our new sponsor, AG1 by Athletic Greens, has been helping you stay healthy and focused for your church hoop league. You heard right, P. I take AG1 every morning before work and every evening before my games, and it makes me feel unstoppable. So is AG1 a nutritional drink? (laughs) Yes, and covering my nutritional basis for the day literally couldn't be easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing every morning. Done. Easy peasy. Is it expensive? It costs less than $3 a day. It's pretty good if you ask me. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Wow. Go to athleticgreens.com backslash podcast P. That's athleticgreens.com backslash podcast P. Check it out. So you guys just got done playing Oklahoma twice uh, in three days, and we got to talk about SGA. He's been phenomenal this year, uh, just putting up crazy numbers. He's scoring. But he was a part of that trade that brought you over to the Clippers. So is there any connection there or rivalry between you two uh, when you're both involved in the trade? It's like, all right, like you got to be good for the Clippers now, and then he's got to you know, put on for Oklahoma now. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, no, I, I love Shea. I love Shea's game, man. Shea is nice. Like I, and he's. I don't even know who to compare him to. Like he's got his own lane. Like, and people don't understand. He's he's bigger than you think. He might look small, like on court, but he's he's like six six, bro. And he's like, is he a guard? Is he a point? Is he yeah, a shoot? Like his game is just. You know, he but he's nice. He's shifty. He dope. Shifty, plays at his own speed. Like, he's deceptively quick. You know, he's going to rock you to sleep and then blow by you. Like, he, everything is just pace. Like, slow, fast, fast, slow. Like, he's going to throw you off, your timing off. So, it's tough. Like, even, like, you might, you might be in front of him. You might stop him. And you'll relax. <laughs> and then he'll boom attack you right again, and you're like, "Oh shit! I thought I had you. Thought we were done here. Yeah, I thought I thought you was gonna give it up. I, 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 I thought I got you here. But uh, no, nah, it's it's no rivalry, bro. I, I want the best for him. Like I'm happy he's succeeding. Like I didn't watching him and 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 see what he's doing. Like I didn't, you know, I don't think nobody predict he'll be this good. Like 
but he's he's elite and, and he's one of the best young guys that don't get talked about enough. But it's it's no rivalry. Like he's not somebody I look at and be like, damn, like I gotta out compete him or right just because of the trade. Yeah, right. just because of the trade. Like when it happened, man, I reached out to him like, yo, kid, like just you know do you you know keep hooping. I'm a big fan of yours. Like it's love, it's love between me and him. So you know, shout out shout out SGA, man. He he's they Oklahoma got. They got a star. They got a star there. Yeah, so it's interesting. I think this is your first time where you're actually in a big market. You know, you're in Los Angeles and, you know, whether that's endorsement deals or whatever it may be, when you're in a big market, you're typically, it's just a whole different ball game. And mm-hmm. you came from Indiana, small market, then mm-hmm. you're in Oklahoma City, small market. <laughs> so what kind of advice would you give uh, SGA on just kind of, being in a smaller market and kind of how he can be a leader there, just any piece of advice that you'd give him, you know, since you've been there and you enjoyed your time there, but what what piece of advice would you give him being in that smaller market? Yeah, it's obviously easier being in big cities, right? Because you can, like, you can go to dinner and meet this person or that person, like schedule a meeting with this person. Like, it's so much easier in LA, obviously. But um, I think there's advantages for being like the big fish in a small pond, right? Mm-hmm. Like he can pretty much kind of like negotiate what he wants. And right. uh, like I think that's what I took out of it. Like we went after when it, when I was in Indiana um, and I was, you know, getting Gatorade sponsorships and commercials and Papa John's and, you know, all of that stuff. Like we basically went out who we wanted to partner with. You know what I mean? Just because of – I was a big fish in a small pond. Like people wanted to attach to that because they didn't know much about who I was, who, you know what I mean? They wanted to tap into that. Uh, who is this guy? You know what I mean? Opposed to being somebody in a big market, like, oh, we need him because he's going to be all over the place. And so I think he just, you know, just take advantage of that, being the big guy in, in, in a small pond. Like just take advantage of that. I actually just saw him in an AT&T commercial. Today. You guys did the commercial. You saw him today. I saw him today in the AT and T commercial. Oh, I need his. And I was like, "Oh shit!" Like he, he's doing his thing. He's doing like, his ooh, thing. To, <laughs> <Yeah>. Podcast <laughs> doing on, well. Hey. So as you said, P SGA he got his own crazy, unique game and everything. What? Well, but what part of his game gets the highest rating on the PG scale? I'm gonna have to go with his mid range game. His mid range game is tough. Like he got the step backs. He got the shit to get you off balance, the step throughs, up and unders. He's six six, so like point guards usually guard him. He's hooking right over them, fade away and right over them. Like he don't shoot many threes. So like his his mid range game is elite. For like a young that. guy, like his mid range game is tough. That's probably the that, I would say that's best part of his game, hands down, is hey, that midi. Hey, listen, SGA, you just got rated by PG. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Just got rated by PG. That could be a sound. They got a little ring to it. Rated by PG. Wait. Uh, That's P. Rate me, uh, P. Best, best part of your game? <laughs> God. Uh, let me see. Rate me right now, P. You take it way too long. You could have uh, said eye coordination or something. <laughs> Give me something. Yeah, you know what? Your, your stage presence. Stage presence? Your stage presence. I take it. Good, got, hey, good as hell. Hey, me and SGA just got rated by PG. That's going to be our new topic every week. You get rated by PG. <laughs> I just be coming up with all type of stuff. That was a good one. I be loving that. I love that. Rated PG every week. Okay. I love that. So SGA, make sure you watch this podcast, P, and know you just got rated by PG. And that's a legend. Yeah, I'll keep playing. <laughs> Come on. I like that, P. I like that I like that, one. that my presence. Your I presence, like your stage presence. I love that. Best stage. I love that about Ready P. I love that. <laughs> so watching these games the past couple days against the Oklahoma City Thunder, I kind of realized we really haven't discussed much of your time in OKC. And so when you were, uh, the trade talks kind of began when you were in Indiana, you know, it was a, a huge shock to the NBA world that you were going to be going to Oklahoma. So... You know, there were some other teams that were in the mix, whether it was L.A. or Boston. But did OKC as a destination surprise you, too? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Are we like so when I came out and asked for a trade, we it was Indiana. So, like, I knew Indiana was going to do 
best offer, like trade me wherever they can get the best value, right? Mm. So we were trying to protect going somewhere that I really didn't want to go. And so obviously I wanted to come back home. Lakers was, you know, first, like, you know, my idol went there. I want to, yeah. I'm just saying if we had you at the Lakers. <laughs> I'm, I'm with the right team. I'm with the right team. You is, I'm just saying. So when so when it happened, like, you know, a couple of days went by and it was just dry. My my agent, Aaron, was like, yo, we're hearing stuff from Boston. We're hearing stuff from Cleveland. Bro, I thought I was going to go to to Cleveland. Wow. Cleveland was like close to to getting me with Braun there. That would have been dope. It was close. Ooh. It was close. Not not a lot of people know that. I didn't know that. And <laughs> and so Dante was like our mediator, right? Dante yep. Jones, uh, who's our our assistant, he was like our mediator. So he takes me to Bron's crib, chopping it up with Bron. He's like, "Yo, like, like how how like how can we make this work?" So we trying to figure it out. We trying to like you know, he's going back like, "Yo, you know, telling him what 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 we need to do, like who how to get me." So I'm thinking like, oh, okay, we this we might make this happen. I might be with Bron over here in Cleveland. Oh my god! And I, it it fell through. <laughs> it fell through because, you know, Cleveland and Indiana is the same division. Mm-hmm. So Indy was like, well, sh- we're not gonna trade them to our division. So then that fell through. So then I'm like, damn, back to square one. Like, what if? What the hell am I gonna go now? <laughs> so Boston came up. Um, I think San Antonio <clears throat> was like a dark horse in it. Kawhi was still there, so I was, I was about like, to say, was Kawhi? Still yeah, yeah. Kawhi was still there, so I was like, Shit, that's not bad either. Like that could be a cool spot. And um, I want to say like Toronto at the time. Mm. So still, days go on. I don't hear nothing, and then I, I don't hear nothing from Pacers. Like complete quiet from Pacers. We're not talking to them, or I'm not at least talking to them. They haven't communicated nothing with me, so I don't know what's what's gonna happen. Then out the blue, Pritchard calls me. It's like, hey, we traded you to Oklahoma City. I'm like, Oklahoma City? <laughs> Bro, what? Like, I didn't hear, like, my agent didn't hear of Oklahoma. Like, nobody heard Oklahoma at all thinking to make a trade for me. So I'm like, all right, whatever, dude. Click. So <laughs> so now I'm in Oklahoma, right? So I hit up, uh, and I'm at the crib. And I hit up, uh, so I, I talked to all of uh, Oklahoma people. Sam Presti calls me. You know, we chop it up like, hey, we happy to have you here. Like, we think, you know, you'll do great things here with Russ. Like, you two would be great together. You know what I mean? And I, I was a fan of Russ's game. You know what I mean? And I've never played with a mega star that, at the time, he was a mega star, superstar. And I've never played with, you know what I mean? So I was excited. Like, oh, should I get a team up with, like, one of them ones? So I was excited about it. Remember, I called him up that night, FaceTimed him. Like, yo, Beto, like, take a shot. (laughs) (laughs) So we took a shot. We took a shot on – and it was actually around my birthday. And a lot of people don't know, me and Russ' brother, Ray, we got the same birthday. So – and it was around the same – it was literally like within a day or two or it might have been on my birthday when when it went through, something like that. So we called and we like, yo, take a shot. Happy birthday, bro. Happy birthday. And so we took a shot, took a shot with Russ on FaceTime, like, and it was just a great celebratory moment of like, yo, we gonna start something special here. And um, yeah, bro, it was, it was, it was cool. It was cool. Then, you know, I got to Oklahoma. They showed me around, showed me the history of the city, of the community. Um, Russ was out there. We chopped it up. We hung out. Mello makes a, a surprise guest appearance. We were getting mellow at the time too. So it was just like a cool moment coming to Oklahoma and starting like a new chapter. So in your second year in Oklahoma, you had an amazing season. I think you were third in MVP voting and you were also third in the Defensive Player of the Year award. And looking back on that, what do you think clicked? Why did you have such an amazing season that season? Honestly, it was just like they let me be me. They let me hoop in every way possible. Like Billy Donovan basically was just like, yo, be you. Go be you every night. He didn't like it, it wasn't. And this is like this is just what happened there. It wasn't like I was coached on like a a play by play scenario. Like if I mess up, cool. He trusted that I was going to figure it out or pick it up. Like, you know, he just let me just just go. 
no 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 strings no no you know nothing was like p just let's go hoop and then that's how russ was russ was you know get me going like you know and it was easy every he he when i was there he would draw so much attention that a lot of times bro i used to just get wide open shots just from running with them and and it was easy always to get in the rhythm in the games and defensively like I, I was our defensive player. Like I was, I was. We had myself. Uh, we had Steve-O, uh, Dre before he got hurt. Like we had defensive guys, and I was like, I was who was going to guard the best player every night. And so, you know, with that, it was just being healthy and, and being available on a nightly basis. Um, all of that. Once all of that was like in place, like I was, bro, mentally, I was just in a good place every night. We stepped on the floor, like. Y'all going to get the best version of me because I'm locked in. Like, I can be myself. I can play how I want. I'm comfortable. You know, Russ is going to get me looks, easy opportunities. Like, there was always a moment. I feel like I was always going to get in rhythm because he's going to get me some easy ones. You know what I mean? Even if I don't start the game off shooting well, uh, he's going to get me some easy ones to where I can get hot. And so, uh, yeah, bro, it just clicked well. Me and him just, you know, we, we, we tag, tag team right off each other. And it was it was like a, it was like a, a special, beautiful bond in, in Oklahoma. Speaking of MVPs, we got a crazy battle this year. We got Embiid, and every year it seems like the Joker's in there for some reason. And we maybe might got Giannis up in there because he's been balling too. But I want to talk about the award itself, Pete. Like, what does the MVP award really mean? I think it's whoever helps and give their team the best chance to win every night. Like I think, I think the availability that you that you play throughout a season should should play the biggest factor in the team being successful. Cause it's like I like I've mentioned earlier, like it's hard to to go through an eighty two game season and be healthy every night, bro. It's you know how much stuff you got to deal with, like body being being achy, something's hurt, something is sore. You got family stuff going on. You got kids stuff going on. Yeah. Spouse stuff going on. Parents. Like, it's so many factors that you have to gamble with that people don't understand. And now you have to be at the highest level competing to give your chance the best – or to give your team the best chance to win, bro. On a nightly basis, that, that, that like, it there that should have the biggest value. And so when you, when you look at – what Giannis is doing when you look at what what Joker is doing. I was a big fan of what Tatum is doing. Mm. You got to take that into, I think, a factor when you're looking at all three of them, like, all right, who's who's played the most out of them, right? Like, who – look at the competition, the teams that they've beat, right? Like, who – and it, it it is difficult based off of, like, who's playing on primetime TV because mm. the voters are media. Right. Right. Yep, that's true. So you got to look at you got to take that into account, like who's playing on the primetime channels, who's getting more spotlight looks um, and who's like like the usage rate, like who's being used more like, you know what I mean? I right, think all right. of that goes into to the factor of who should be MVP. Mm, I, I, I agree with you. Should who, it be, like who's your favorites? You know what? I'm going to say it be just because he was so, he was close to getting it, I think, last year and they, and they didn't get it. Yeah. And I think it's, it was between him and, it, and yeah, Joker, I Joker. Think, right? And I think as big as he is, he's been out doing everybody. Right. And, and I think he deserves it, you know, just because even if it's one of those years where you sit back and you like, well, he got it because of this year. But right. I think he deserves it no matter what. Right. The man plays a hell of a game. I've never seen a big man that shoots threes like him. He's focused every game. He takes the game real serious. And not to say Joker doesn't. Joker's amazing, too. Right. But I just think before it's all said and done, Joel, I think he definitely deserves one. So what's your level of – and Dow, you too. So, like, what's your level of, like, performance, availability? mm Value. I'm going with Joker. I think he affects the game in more ways just because of his passing ability. Yeah. The guy can score. He treats everybody like they're little babies. I mean, the guy is just sees so much on the floor. You know, 
Joel Embiid is is dominant and he can shoot threes and all that stuff. But I still think that if you if can you say take, that about Giannis, though, <laughs> yeah. But if you take Giannis off that team, I still think the Milwaukee Bucks are still. You know, they got some guys there. I That's, think over there in in Denver, you got Murray who's coming off an injury. Um, they just don't Porter. You know, and then, then Embiid has has James Harden. If you take the Joker off the Nuggets. It's they're not anywhere that's near close. That's valid. So that's, that's a good that's, way to look at it. If that's you take who I one would of go. those you take, off of their team, how well would that team be? Yeah, I, I that's how I look at it. And then winning obviously is important. I think I don't know where the Sixers are at right now, but I would take. I think they're like third. And I what about what third. about Denver? Where's Denver right now? Denver's first. Yeah, I would. Yeah, that's an open. Then I would for sure say the Joker. So, but he's won the past two times. So, do you think people just get tired? of I both? hate that. I dude, LeBron should have been MVP for like. 10 years straight. Let's talk about code. All the it doesn't it shouldn't matter that he's won it twice. Yeah. It should go based off on who was the this best body of year. work this year. Yeah. Whether you've won it in the past, Jail, it's man. this is not a charity award where they go, oh well, he hasn't got it yet. It should right. just be based on that season. So I hate that. So P, as far as the NBA voting, do you think they should do the voting during I mean after the playoffs or the whole regular season? Which one do you think is better? I think I think it's good how they're doing it now. I think you you should break up both regular season and playoffs. I I I, I think again it's it's tough as it is cuz you can you can have an outstanding season, be the best player all year and not have the team behind you to get right to the finals to win the MVP and that like that shouldn't be a knock against you. Like right, you right. you did everything, you put your body through everything, like show the body of work that you did up until this point, right? And yeah. then this is another part of of the 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 game, you know what I mean? If you go past this, obviously you get finals MVP, but I think it's good. Like I think they're highlighting in the postseason, they're highlighting, you know, the guys that perform in playoffs. There's right, awards right. now um for both conferences for guys that have, you know, played at a higher level during playoffs. Um, so you're getting your playoff awards and then you're getting your regular season awards. And I, I like it. I like it because, again, everything is under the same umbrella. Rookie of the year. Rookies might not make the playoffs. You know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. So they have their regular season awards and then you have your postseason awards. So I, I like it. I like how they break it up you because like it. it is both of them are challenging. All right, guys, as always, we're going to end the show with a social corner question. Uh, We've been building a decent audience. And so we're going to be taking questions from you guys from our YouTube, our Twitter or our Instagram. So make sure you guys are commenting, leave a couple questions and you might get picked to be featured on the show. But today's question is going to be coming from Dragonfly Jones. PG, what up? This is Dragonfly Jones of the Jenkins and Jones podcast. First off, congrats on the pod. Welcome to the podcasting world. Um, I guess the question I have for you is this. Uh, we recently saw J. Cole pull up at Bob Myers podcast, which is random as hell, but I guess they're homeboys or whatever. So the question I have for you is, do you have like a surprise guest who you will want to pull up on you, you know, at your podcast? Or do you have just someone who a lot of us will be surprised that you're actually friends with? So interested in knowing that. Oh, um, Elon Musk. No, <laughs> <laughs> If I, bro, if I could have somebody like, bro, I used to have Dave Chappelle. I would love that. Oh my God. How cool would that be? It would be awesome. Dope. He'd do it. Dope. Dave, I like, please. I would like Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder? Mm hmm. Why Stevie? Just because <laughs> man got all the talent in all the right, world. You hit, you hit left field with that one. Yeah, why Stevie? wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? Stevie Wonder? I had to all think that about talent. It. Can't see, can hear everything in the world, boy. He probably there's a, a lot of, there's a lot of rumors he with hear, that. He got talent. He got more talent than all of us sitting down on this couch. Have you heard the rumors when like Shaq said he was in the elevator with them and he was like, he said, yeah. he really he said like, what up, yeah. Shaq? Like, yeah. he was like, yo. <laughs> they say Stevie always looking at girls' ass all the time. Probably. They say Stevie can see a lot of shit. Yeah. Because you know, when you wear glasses and then you, that's why he be like that. Because when you wear glasses, you can see. And the reason why I said Stevie, I was at Shaka Khan party last night. And I seen him oh, up you in seen person. Him. I'm just really seeing the talent that this okay. man has for all these years, and you can't see into to how he gets help to get around and just knowing all his history of all that talent. I would love to ask this man. Can some you questions. imagine that though? Like that's what I'm saying. That's living that long and not being who, able. Who to would see? expect Stevie to be on our show? No facts. Come on, my brother. <laughs> facts. I yeah. say big names. 
Stevie would be a shock. What was Dave? Dave is Dave. Dave, we always see Dave. <laughs> Dave Have you ever, is Dave. You, you done seen Dave on a podcast. Have you ever seen Stevie? We haven't seen Stevie on a You've podcast. You've never seen Stevie Wonder on no podcast. Drake? Drake? But I feel like Drake. Drake would be huge. Come on. Yeah, I think I mean, a podcast like, is Mr. nothing OBO. but voice. Drake, come on, man. Shout out shout out Stevie Wonder. Shout, shout out, out Stevie, Stevie Wonder. Wonder. Our moms have loved that, that we had Stevie on here and our dad. We ain't even got to come here. We have moms do we the have show mom with and dad Stevie do Wonders. That show. Because they'll be the, they the big, I'm a big fan, but they the biggest fan. All right. So our second question actually comes from Spotify Podcast, which they actually uh, left us a comment on our Twitter. Spotify. And so their question was, need more Team USA behind the scenes stories. So do you got any other stories for us in that time when you were spending uh, with the USA team? Yeah, I, I have some good ones. I was, uh, and it just goes with, when you're watching the 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 best compete at the highest level, and it sucked. We were in Chicago, and I had blew my calf out, right? So I couldn't play, and the intensity was all time high. I mean, we got it was Draymond, it was Demarcus, Kai, Melo, KD, uh, Harrison, the the whole team playing like pickup basically, and like watching the dream team watching the redemption team like when you hear them talk about how they got after it in the practices it was like a flash like flash moment of like damn bro we was they was getting after it like shit talking i mean talking crazy to each other and the intensity was up here bro and i wanted to play so bad bro it was eating me just watching them right but i mean they going at it Draymond's talking his shit. DeMarcus <laughs> talking his shit. Like Kai going crazy. I think KD and, and Melo going at it scoring. Like it was just, it was dope to watch them. Harrison and DeMar going at it. Like it was just dope to watch like this moment of mm -hmm. like, oh shit, this is what this is what happens when you put the best or the top NBA guys together in the world. And you yeah. watch them compete. <clears throat> like this is not like all-star game competing. Mm -hmm. This is like, like sharpening tools competing. Like we finna go do something right now. Let me make you better. Like it was that type of vibe going on. And Coach K is like the ultimate, like he'll he'll have you ready to fight Mike Tyson. <laughs> he just no makes bullshit. It competitive. Just the best communicator in terms of getting you prepared. To where like when he's done, you like, you like ready, bro. Like, what wall you need me to go through now? <laughs> like, like that. And so he gave us a speech going into it of like what it meant putting on those three letters. And mm -hmm. we had that practice, bro. Practice was here. We got out of there. And and after that, I felt like everybody knew like, all right, I know what we know what time it is. Like we know what this mission is. And we went on and we went one goal. But that 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 was one of the most specialist moments I watched the guys compete at. Man, that was great. Man, that was beautiful, man. Well spoken. Cool. That is a wrap for Podcast P, episode four with my guys, Dallas Rutherford and Jackie Long. Appreciate y'all for holding it down, and we appreciate y'all for rocking with us. So just a reminder, episodes are dropping every Monday for the rest of the NBA season. We thank you for tuning in and showing us some support. Make sure you go follow us and subscribe on YouTube and turn on those post notifications so that you don't miss another show. And also make sure you follow us across all our social media platforms at Podcast P Show. Jackie, any last words? Oh, uh, man. Always do what you do best. And uh, we really appreciate everybody out there that's been tuning in and, and um, sending the condolences for my boy on his on his on his on his knee and, and stuff. So, you know, we appreciate everybody. But um, yeah. Make sure y'all tune in next Monday. Podcast P. Stay tuned. You can't even bend down sometimes. Like it just, your, your knee just yeah. crack when it wants to. If it's bend cold. Down. Yeah. If it's cold, it, it, it bothers you. If it's too warm, it bothers you. What'd you say? I said bend down. Like I'm it's saying, like the bend first down thing you to get stuff. With the ACL, you <laughs> See what just I said? You down. can't talk like this to your boys. <laughs> Everything got to be like that. Everything. But nah, I tore my ACL before. That, okay. was, that was in a celebrity uh basketball league. Oh shit. Yeah. They, yeah. Didn't, well, you weren't supposed to be out there. Playing defense I, I, I or offense? Walk us listen, through that play. Y'all my boys, y'all gonna laugh at me real bad how it happened. And it was probably in the warm up. He for sure went up for like a layup and just did it. In the warm up line. I'm gonna tell y'all what happened. Just y'all wanna laugh me funny. They tipped the ball off. 
And me and you my started. boy. You started. Yeah, I was just about to say. <laughs> I leave. B. I mean, P. 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 You started. You, you was wide open back in the day, and they didn't even, they just left you open to shoot the damn ball. And what did you do? Nothing. Bricked. Okay. So I, I, didn't I even did. Go there. I did. So what I did was they tipped the ball, and me in the center already was like, if you you taller than him, tip it right to me, and I'm going to go right to the um to the court, to the uh, rim. <laughs> okay. This fool literally does what I say, but he like, I, I'm trying to get fast because there's people there. I'm trying to show off. I could have just grabbed the ball and went up for a layup. I'm trying to act like it's a lob and jump <laughs> and came right down on my leg by myself. Wait, 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 wait. So this yeah. is off the tip. Off the tip. Okay. He, he grabbed it and he threw it like a lob. Got it. Got where, it. Where I could have just caught it. Okay. And caught it. came down so and you, went you, up. You, you, were, you, you weren't so in the you, circle. So you he were jumped by the basket kind of cherry picking I, a little I bit. I took off. Get, got it. I thought I was fast. He trying to, you know, people there. I'm trying to look. look. <laughs> Boom. Came down. So it's safe ah, to say. The worst pain. Your stats. You scream? Your stats Are you a screamer? Like, ah! You know what? When it <laughs> first happened, I was at your game when yours happened. Yeah. So I was like you for a minute. How I just I just went down. Yeah. I didn't know if I had broken none because I never been in the situation. Right. So I was just like, oh my God, this <laughs> shit. What is this? And I tried to get up to play it off like right. nothing wrong. Right. Went to the bench hopping. Yeah, the and stupid then look. I couldn't move my leg. I had to go to uh to the hospital.